get rid of them as much as I can before we. Oh, we, we, God we... damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Very second. Ah, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh. <laughs> that was that was literally the first thing that came over the air. <laughs> if anyone needs me, I'm just I'm just gonna dip, go. I'm, I'm done. I ret- Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beam Saber, the Senate half, uh, part 26. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Austin Ramsey, I am the creator of Beam Saber and the host and your GM for this evening. My pronouns are he, him, and you can find me on Twitter at not an in. As always, this stream is presented by You Don't Meet in an Inn, an actual play podcast about exploring obscure tabletop role-playing games with a diverse, rotating cast. And also, something I probably should have said before that bit was that if you want to find the rules for Beam Saber, you can find them at austin-ramsay.itch.io slash beamsaber, or the quick start guide at tinyurl.com slash beamsaber. All right, with all of my plugs out of the way, let's go to Sasha. Hi, I'm Sasha. My pronouns are NNs, I think. Um, I, I, I keep forgetting whether or not I actually switched them over for the stream, so I'm just like, here, here are new pronouns for you. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sasha underscore Renault. You can find all my game dev stuff at TCabbage. Thank you. Also joining us is Jess. Hey guys, I'm Jess. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at uh, the quasi name Q U A S I N Y M. Yes, I am mixing Greek and Latin. I don't care. <laughs> oh, and uh, I have a podcast, uh, M- The Movie More. You can find it on iTunes. It's great. We just did us. Nice. Also with us is Takuma. Hi, I'm Takuma. My friends are they and she. Uh, my Twitter is at Takuma underscore Okada underscore. Um, I, mm. I have an itch page with games <laughs> on it. Uh, no road home dot itch dot io. Um, yeah, you know, that's it. That's it today. That's all. <laughs> it's been about a month since we streamed, so we're all a little unfamiliar with our usual stuff. Oh <laughs> And last but not least is Ray. Hi, I'm Ray. These they them or he him pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at Ray Ray the Gay Gay, uh, and you can find the little mini games I've uh, designed on my itch uh, at uh, Ray in the Fog I'm hopefully going to have a draft of. Um, my uh, Forged in the Dark hack uh, called Dark Orchestrations up by the end of the month. Nice. Okay. So. Who remembers where we left off? Sasha put a very thorough uh, (laughs) summary in the chat a while back. And did, and did. And did that help any of you remember? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So we got. The we most, got... Yeah. The most pertinent detail is the elevator was opening up and we were being swarmed by people with silver eyes. Did they have silver eyes or were they all silver? I can't remember. They had silver eyes, and it wasn't okay. that they were swarming into the elevator. It was that they were swarming into the airlock after the elevator important distinction yes which was a consequence from an earlier uh role and put you all in a desperate position because we make good life choices uh here at (laughs) cenotaph.inc yes so down on the uh fourth level of the twindler and red headquarters the four of you are in your AVs. In the airlock leading to the R&D level of this facility. There have been no staff throughout the previous four levels. Previous three levels, my apologies. 
until now as the airlock on the interior side opened up and the staff came swarming through with silver eyes and nails and are just crawling all over your AVs and also the bear the three bear drones that are with you so oh yeah we took those yeah yeah we had friends is that marked on our sheet uh i am going to put a six tick clock up to yes we marked a fire team cohort okay sorry yeah. i'm oh. just a disaster day today Oh right, there are a cohort on your on your character sheet, which has its yeah. own rules. Right. Okay, so I actually don't need that clock. All right. So these people in various uh, bits of clothing, in various uh, various styles, but all of them in rough shape, are swarming over your machines. They seem to be trying to find any little crack crevice or vent on your mechs. What do you all do? I would like to catch one and um, examine it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. What do you mean by catch? What do, what do you do? I, I, wanna, I wanna net one. Um, I wanna uh, use, a, use a shroud to uh, Im immobilize it and then bring it into the mech where I can take a look at it. Okay, so you're gonna use your body bag launcher, and then I love that, and then stick Ooh. it in the pear wiggler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's just a monkey child. So, what do you want to roll for that? It's a manipulator, I think. Yeah, that yeah. sound that sounds right to me. Real fine, just dexterity thing. So. Yeah. What's what's my what's my things? What's the uh, I think this will be desperate standard. Cool. Get XP. Yeah, I do get XP. Hurry. That's a five. That's a oh, five. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I was going to say hello and hooray at the same time, and it, it didn't. That's fine. <laughs> okay, what consequences should you take? Yeah. All right. So they are crawling all over the magpie, and you you spot a good one to uh, hit with one of your shrouds, and you you snag it, and you stick it in the container section of the magpie, and while you're distracted by that, you hear a terrible wrenching sound come from one of the other arms. Mm -hmm. So take the level 2 damage broken arm Good Lord. on the uh, magpie. Right? As you look over and there's like three of them hanging off of the like now limp arm that has broken at the joint. Hmm. Okay. Broken arm. Yep. Scarecrow? Oh. Okay. Sorry. So, um... You guys are gonna see something weird happen here. But the Karasu is going to rear up high. And then... The... Main heavy cannon is going to retract along a bunch of Z brackets. Forming into kind of like a condensed storage barrel. And then all the armor... The entire weight of the machine shifts backwards as all the armored plates shift forwards and open up like a fan. I have included a helpful little illustration here. Oh, yeah. Because I've had way too much fun thinking about this. Where is this illustration? Uh, it's in the Discord. Okay. Go oh, center yeah. of weight shifts and uh, yeah! Oops, I forgot this to bring us over that. to the play screen. There we oh. go. Oh, well, we're there now. Right. Uh... <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I have taken uh, more than meets the eye, and just to declare what I have, uh, 
all points in Bombard are gone. Those are now four points in Battle. And the Fine Heavy Cannon is retracted. For anti-infantry device, and do I have to declare both slots? It says to yes. load, it didn't say. Okay, and a machine gun. Okay, so you go from being a crow to a peacock, and yep. <laughs> very cool. And um, so I would like to fire this anti-infantry device, which is the same real gun, except set up as a shotgun. <laughs> All right. So, what are you going to roll for this? I would like to roll battle. Yeah, that sounds right. So this will be a uh, desperate standard. Okay. Uh, and you know what? Hmm. So I've got 46. I'm thinking... Are we still calling them Devil's Bargains? I, I've, I've lost track at this point. <laughs> you can still call them Devil's Bargains. They're going to become collateral dice with the next update. Okay, collateral dice. Does that mean they can't be greater effect anymore? Or is it just... Well, they were always... It's just an extra dime. Pretty sure? No, it was dice or increased effect. Mm. Well, I'll let you take either one. Uh, okay. Well, um... Well, what 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 is the what is the collateral um, before I decide to take that? Uh, while you're busy transforming, uh, a group of these people will take down one of the three bears. Mm. What do you guys think? I I'm willing to do that. I mean, I think it's your choice. Okay. Yeah, it's for Devil's Bargain. Okay, I'll take, I'll do that, and, uh, cool. So that's 4d6 and increased effect. Effect, effect. <laughs> we can talk. Oh what my god! That's <laughs> 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 three ones and a two! Holy shit. <laughs> I did roll four ones on... Uh, four dice. <gasps> so. Oh my goodness gracious. We're good at this game. It was just deeply not meant to be. Wow. And I felt so cool. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the Krasu transforms and you line up your shotgun at this crowd of them, this just like mass of these bodies. And you watch as one of them takes down one of the, the bears and you let loose with your shotgun. And some of the round, like the rounds punch through some of them. Cause I imagine that they're probably like fist sized, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they don't react like flesh. They react more like plasticine. There is Ooh. a unnatural uh, stretching and tearing that happens to them. There is no blood. There is no splash. Nothing, nothing like comes that. out. They just distort. And you fire again into the crowd, hoping for better effect. And then you realize that the crowd you're firing upon was actually covering another one of the bears, and you've trashed that. So you're down to one bear. Oof. Tower or pitchfork, or are either of you up to anything? Uh, I was kind of in shock that these people were about to get shot, but now I'm in, like, what the fuck mode. Yeah, imagine kind of like the T-1000, but less, but more matte, less shiny. I don't, what, sorry? 
the Terminator? Yeah, the T one thousand from never Terminator seen Two. Movie. Okay. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> I I recommend seeing Terminator Two. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my childhood movies. Um, it should not be a childhood movie. I, no, I, I looked it, sh- at that movie. it should not. It should not no, no, nor nor should RoboCop. But you know what? Those were both like the two childhood movies <laughs> for me. But I think anyways, this explains a lot. Yeah, it probably it. does. <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah. I feel like everything just makes sense now. <laughs> just click. Also, um, that was a desperate roll, right? Yes, it was. So mark XP. Sweet. Um, I mean, like my thing is like, well, while these these people are like teeny tiny in comparison to y'all, they're like a waist height on the on the mantis. Mm-hmm. So like, I can't just grab them. <laughs> Oh yeah, you could. You could probably grab one and like. But I can't yeet them. <laughs> yeah, you probably could. I mean, it, it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be like three or four at a time. It would, like you wouldn't have a fistful of them. You'd just be throwing them like one at a time around. Okay. Yeah, you're still like uh, twice their size. <laughs> still a bag. Still very much yeah. a bag. Look, the average person is like what about five? Eight, something like that, right? And the mantis is fifteen feet, so you yeah, are yeah. almost three times as tall as they are. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. They're like butt height. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's fair. I'm just like trying to conceptualize the the the, the visual. Yeah. Um. So, I think. How big is the area we're operating in? Uh, it's it's fairly large because I mean it's large enough to have probably at least uh, four like transport trucks in it at a time, uh, and not plus there's now you know the four of your avies plus the three bears. So well, one bear and two wrecks. Oh. So there was. Lots of this is a fairly large space, and the at the far end of it, the door is still opening. How much of the space is filled by these zombie things? Uh, probably like not that much yet because they're still like bottlenecked by the large doors opening. So at least the gap in the doors is, and probably like the first. But- but they're still streaming through the door. Yeah, only like the fastest have reached you. Okay. I'm thinking I want to try to get behind the sort of the main group of them, if I can. Um, like sort of almost, almost like jump and then use my anti-grav boosters to kind of pulse up and then get behind the main crowd of them, maybe over to the door. Um, yeah. Just to try to pull pull some of them away from the main group. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I don't um, think I don't think you like you're just trying to. Hmm. Yeah, and and I wanna I wanna see if I can get to. Uh, so the door. I don't think you need to roll for that because while they have a lot of numbers, they don't like. They aren't especially solid, and they aren't especially large. So there's not a whole lot stopping you from getting to the other side of the room. And it sounds like you're maybe trying to assist someone else's action. Yeah, actually, I want to. I kind of want to retcon. Um, sorry, I just I remembered a thing that I decided about Tower. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, a little bit ago. Um, and I think I'm actually going to go over to uh, Dredge and try to help uh, Cope start sort of picking the ones that are um, climbing Cormac uh, and try to sort of divert uh, those ones. What are you doing with them after you pull them off of the magpie? I mean, I think it's kind of like uh, that video of... Um, there's this video that I saw of a lady with like a bunch of cats and kittens, um, 
that are all just like swarming her trying to prepare food. So I think it's like picking them up and like plopping them a safe distance away. <laughs> and sort of like doing that like every five seconds, just trying to keep them away from the magpie. Uh, because I'm, I think Tower saw the damage they did uh, and knows that the magpie could be very easily overwhelmed. Okay. All right, Does what that do you... make sense? Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. What do you want to roll um, for this? I'm going to go for manipulate because I get an extra die. Uh, so that's two dice, if that's all right. Yep. I'm assuming it's desperate. Yes. Okay. This yeah. will be desperate standard. Okay. Everything is desperate. Yay. Everybody have a chance for a consequence. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Manipulate. Desperate. Standard. Two dice. That's a five. It's not the end of the world. It's a five, yeah. So you, you're you able to uh, pull some away, and I'm going to add two to the R&D personnel clock. Oh, so that's what that clock was. Yeah. So you, you managed to keep them off of the magpie for a while. Personnel. Yeah, and let's see, but, uh, so here's, here's the thing, here's the thing about the Mantis, is that compared to the other AVs, it is much lower and much more open. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So while you're pulling one of them aw like away from the magpie, or just like you've got two, one in either hand, and while you're putting one of them down at like far away, you look over and the other one has like been has grabbed onto the form of the mantis and has like basically ripped itself in half. And when you look back over, it's got it's reaching for you th into your open cockpit. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, won't pretend that's not horrifying. Yeah, and so it's got a hand around your neck. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give you uh, the level two harm terrified. Yep. Sounds about accurate. Um, <laughs> but... Unless you want to resist the harm, yeah, I, I think I think I might I think I might do that. Um, if I have three I have three ticks left, <laughs> I'm gonna resist. I minus one D. I am, I'm not gonna resist that because <laughs> oh. I would be rolling. There'd be an insight roll, right? Ah, uh, well, that or would resolve? it would probably be resolve. I'd be rolling one die. Do I want to risk it? Do I want to risk it? Mm. Playing for a good time, not a long, not, not a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's always the fact that this is uh, harm, which doesn't affect your vehicle actions. Fair, but I do a lot of stuff outside of my, my vehicle. <laughs> that is also true. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flippy. I'm an acrobat. I uh, okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm gonna try and resist. I. Uh, all right. One die. Resolve. Fifty. Oh no, it's not even fifty-fifty. You need a four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> but also like. It's kind of fun if I, like, I'm always down for being mean to my character, so, like, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, this is a 50-50. Okay, flip that coin. Don't fuck me. Oh! Don't fuck me. That's a three. Oh. oh, no. Okay, well, you don't take the level two harm terrified. <laughs> I'm at, I'm right at I'm right at my threshold. Well, no, but when it fills is when you yeah. stress out. So yep. 
can't I take uh, dire, action? dire action? Yeah, you can start taking those. Uh, so tell me, how do you how do you like resist the terror of this thing reaching for you through your cockpit? I've still got that gun. <laughs> I think I shoot it in the face. I think I shoot it through the fucking head. Yeah. Just like right through your cockpit <laughs> window. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You you put you put a round through its skull and it falls off of off of your uh off of the, the arm of the mantis and it, it twitches a bit and then is still. So clearly these, these things are not indestructible, just very damage resistant. So they're zombies, you gotta destroy the head. Maybe. <laughs> and I'm gonna decide, uh, I kinda wanna pan away from tower and I'll think about what I do. Yeah, you think about what your dire action will be. Or Pit if I take one at all. Fair. Uh, pitchfork. What are you up to? Having seen all this, uh, I think it's time to uh, get a little stompy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you just gonna do a jig on these folks? Yeah. Bert, stomp! Hey, and you got those two extra legs on Bert. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Let Bert be a stompy boy. What are you going to roll for this? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> it, maneuver or destroy? We're just, like, getting right into it. We're not even half an hour in. <laughs> hmm. Why not battle out of curiosity? I don't think that this is, like... I, I feel like battle's more of an engaging a foe that is, like, of somewhat equivalent size fair i have more points in it but like eh. it doesn't feel right this isn't it skillful right. this is just no. this is this is pitchfork flailing around in her av yeah i think she's panicking a little bit because this is this is pretty pretty bad this is pretty horrifying um this is, this is pitchfork button mashing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 all right do you, are you gonna uh, push yourself by spending any quirks? Uh, I have large and quadrupedal, which makes sense. I yeah. think. Yeah, it does. So, wait, how does pushing with is it? Is it one or two? It's oh, one. Okay. One quirk. It's one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I will spend that. Uh huh. And yeah, I'm going to roll. I'm going to say this is destroy. This is just Bert just going, going, going wild on these things. <laughs> I, I don't. I think over the course of this round, Keiko's been like, "Oh, these aren't people anymore. This is bad." Even if that's not actually the case, that's what she believes now, at least. Yeah. So this will be desperate standard. Cool. Destroy. Des. No, not risky. Desperately. Standard. Two dice. Okay. Okay. A four. Yeah. I'll add two more ticks to the R and D personnel <coughs> clock. Okay, um... Oh, just for flavor, I think I'm also, like, using the shield and just, like, whack a mole kind of. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yep. Okay. Um... So, yeah, so you, you're, you're just, like, s squashing these things as best as you can with Bert, just going all out and smashing them with the shield and because they have such a strange consistency 
you're gonna the Bert's gonna take the level two damage gummed up as mm. they get in the joints. Buddy, okay. Hmm. Do I Oh Ray, why? Why? <laughs> cursed, cursed. No. Ray says in chat they have a bad mouth feel. Hmm. Cursed. Don't like that. You're not wrong. <laughs> but you shouldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to do meet as cheap save the metal. Oh, how do you do what? that? I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, oh, what is this? What is this? Um, is it like you you panic so much you open the cockpit and start like attacking them with your like purse like your infantry gear as the same time you're operating the mech and one of them gets you? Oh no, that's that's totally it. No, that's yeah, yeah. So like I'm I'm like the closer they get to the cockpit, I freak out. I kick the door open and I'm just like trying to kick them off Bert. Um I probably have like yeah, some 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 sort of pole arm type thing that I'm like pushing. Maybe it's just like a broom. Maybe I just have a broom <laughs> or something in there or like maybe it's a pitchfork. Who knows? But yeah, I'm trying to push them off and then just like I, there's too many of them. Well, as a soldier, you do get <laughs> fine <laughs> fine melee weapon. <laughs> I mean, do you want to declare that? A declare a fine melee weapon? And what is it if you're doing that? Um, knowing that we would be coming into an underground facility, what's the weird thing that Keiko would have brought on this mission? Hmm. Um, maybe, maybe it is just like... Uh, I bet there's like a torch on the end of it. I bet it's like, I bet it's got like a claw on the end for grabbing things, and it's also got like a light. So this isn't what it's meant for, but it's like really sturdily built. I did think you meant like a fire torch. I thought you were going for like a um, weird claw flamethrower. Same. That would be cool, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's some kind of claw thing. All right. Yeah, it's it's like, oh my god, it's like one of those toy claw grasper things. <laughs> the click, 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 clicks. Except industrial grade, yeah. Oh, wow. Did Is it the Jaws of Life, but reverse? <laughs> the thing they used to, like, it's like the hydraulic thing they used to open, like, crushed cars. Oh. Yes? I, I, I'm not finding a good picture. Oh my god, these, these things are heavy duty. <laughs> Hydraulic rescue tools. Yeah, yeah, it, the, the end definitely looks like this. Okay. It's like on a big pole and the end looks like this and it has like I, a very bright light on the end too. I don't know I what you're this. looking at, but I will say if it looks like a face or a mouth, Tower has inevitably stuck googly eyes to it at some point. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I missed you guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> while while you are like pushing one of these things away with your open cockpit, you like feel this horrendous pain in like your leg, and you look down, and so you're gonna take the level two harm uh, busted ankle as one of them like grabbed onto your foot and just yanked. And like oh. you're able to knock it off before anything worse happened. But like that's not something you want to be stepping on. Okay. This is going so well. So. Yeah, but there you go. There's your meat is cheap, save the metal. This is, yep, we're good at this game. Okay, uh, Tower, do you know what you want to do, dire action-wise? Remind me of what happens if I fuck up a dire action. So, if you take a dire action, at the end of it, you will get a level 3 harm and, mm. and a scar as normal. 
Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. But you get to take one more action, and in that action you ignore all harm and damage. Uh, you can't spend any stress since you're already maxed out, but you can spend quirks. And but if, if you get less than a six, if you get less than a six, you have to stop taking dire actions. That doesn't mean you don't succeed at what you were doing. It just means that you are then removed from the scene as per usual. Do I still? There is a also a possibility of a single stress heal, isn't it? I think on a crit or something. I, uh, I was going to get to that, Jess. And it's, it's okay. And Tower, what were you going to say? So I only take the harm if I fail fail, or do I take it if I don't get a six? You you get the level three harm regardless of, like, as soon as you stop taking dire actions, you get the level three harm. Mm, lovely. <laughs> yeah, there's no getting out of that one. Un just, unless, as Jess said, oh, right, you crit, roll yeah. a crit, and then instead of extra effect, you lose one stress... And you don't get removed from the scene. I just, <clears throat> I, I can't see how Tower would continue to be useful here, is my thing. That's fair. Like, like I was thinking about this before the session started. Like, this is just entirely out of their domain. <laughs> um, like, like, they, you know... You got, you got, you got three in maneuver. You could uh, start Katamari damaging them. I could <laughs> do that. <laughs> I could do that. Um, but a, a level three stress is a lot. Hey. Uh, 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 damage, harm. Mm, mm, I'm tired. Yeah. That's a lot, and I would be out of commission for the rest of the mission. So, I mean, unless you get that crit. I'm not. I'm not willing to risk that. I'm sorry. Okay. I know you want me to. So you you're just gonna leave the scene then? Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's not even leave the scene. I think they just sort of like they just like they don't run, but they kind of. May I make a suggestion? Yeah. What if by this point the doors at the far end are open enough for the mantis to get through? And so you hit your active camo, go through, and disappear deeper into the facility, and these things can't find you. And you'll return at some point later. My only thing is... Tower is actively trying not to ditch the party and, like, is actively trying to be more involved with the group. So I don't know if that makes it more interesting if they run. I mean, they're yeah. terrified. So maybe, yeah. you know, they break. Yeah. I, yeah, I think. They, they did max out on stress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering what's sort of the most in-character thing to do here. Um, and I think... If I'm being in character, it's to run and to try to get out those back doors. But it makes me sad. <laughs> there, there isn't a back door at this time. Uh, to be clear, no, you know what I mean. yeah. Like the, those, uh, the airlock door. Yeah. Well, I think that's what they do, and I'll, I'll come up with whatever I take for a scar. In the meantime, I'm sorry. Okay. When you think it's been enough time for Tower to come back in. You you let me know, okay? Yeah. And uh, I'll let you, and then we'll figure out whether or not it's been long enough. Yeah. Okay, I'll so the mantis winks out of existence, and then there's just like the faintest hint of some of the staff getting like shoved aside near the door of the inner airlock. And then it's just the three of you. As far as you can know, as far as you can tell. Dredge, what are you up to? I'm so glad that you asked. Um, I'd like to do two things. Um, I'd like to uh, use Doctor on the thing that I, that I, that I caught. <laughs> right now? Uh, right now, and then after I do that, I would like to tune the Nell to melt the rest. 
Oh. Okay. So Gross. this this is going I think that this is a setup action to then give you greater effect on some future action. Okay. Uh, what do you want to roll to try and understand these things? I mean, that's that's an engineer. Um, I think that could just be an engineer anyway, because I'm not <laughs> sure how much of this is biological, but... Yeah. My position is... Uh, I think that this is desperate standard. Cool. Because, like, you're, you're in there with this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Oh! <laughs> that's a crit, baby. Woo! That's a crit. All right. <laughs> Sorry, that was really loud. No, that was great. Okay. Um, so what does it look like as you are investigating this thing? Um, I think that it is um, going into one of the storage units and, uh, like... Um, hitting the not hitting, but like activating the the, the display on the outside of the um, of the shroud, which I, I I feel like is sort of like a like a hard shell, um, and um, and the, the the shrouds are you know designed to do very basic um, uh, um, analytics, and um, and like. Keeping it, keeping it uh, still, and then um, just sort of vivisecting it a bit, and um, and I don't, I don't know what the, the thing is. Maybe it is really just um, figuring out what uh, at, at what um, frequency the uh, it becomes unstable and um, and like deteriorates. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, I just have a have a, a capsule of, of goop at the end of it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely just, as you said, deteriorates and turns, loses like some of its coherency. It does not like liquefy, per se, but it definitely uh, loses its resemblance to a person. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that this. I think that this crit. It's gonna give you uh, improved position when you do your roll for the Nell. Cool. In addition to the improved effect that you already have. Beautiful. Um, I think it's a. That's a destroy. Um. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Perfect. So, um, so this will be risky. Great. It's risky. Great. Also, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the Nell um, to push myself because that's literally what I'm doing with it, um, which fills up my quirks, which is a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Um, so that's getting very spicy very quickly. Three dice. And then improved effect. So let's destroy. Uh, you said risky, great. Yes. Wins. A three dice. That's two fives. Whew. Oh. Okay. Hmm. So. What? What is it going to be? Okay. I know what the consequence is. Uh, the consequence is going to be reduced effect. So you open up with the Nell on these things and the ones that are like immediately in your path, they, they just uh, turn to jello and fall to the ground. But when, when you were uh, calibrating the nail for this uh, because you're doing it in a bit of a hurry you didn't take into account 
the shape of the room and the shift and like the door opening has changed the harmonics and so it just wasn't as effective as it should have been if you were like operating under lab conditions so two more ticks there's like not that many of these things left but there's still enough that they can you know mess y'all up uh, scarecrow what are you gonna do okay so for the sake of the anime shot transition here you see the um, Scarecrow is actually in the lower cockpit now. She, sometime during the transformation, she jumped to the other seat. So she's in more of like a motorcycle-style cockpit now. And um, she makes some calibrations. And the anti-personnel, the shrapnel cannon, is actually just the railgun. And it's using the same ammo. These are big tungsten slugs. But it's using the each magnetic rail in opposite directions to shatter into pieces before throwing it out. So she's adjusting the calibrations... Um, for smaller pieces with higher velocity and higher penetration to compensate for having bounced off them with big chunky ones. And so she's just going to try and clear up the rest of them. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this will be risky standard. Okay. I'm just going to roll a destroy. Sorry, no, it's a, a battle. Yeah. A four. Okay, you know what? I'll fucking take it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I'm cursed. <laughs> All right. Um So yeah, I think while you are while you are busy recalibrating this, they get up on the Karasu. And so when you fire, the first round has like the, the shrapnel, some of it is deflected into like back into the gun and so you're going to take the level two damage um uh, uh sparking targeters hmm i'm trying to see if i could reasonably come up with any way to resist that um how much if you've got any load on your rv left you could Declare armor. I'm going to junk the magnification suite. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think what that means then is just that... Um, I think that's close to the... I think the magnification suite is like a module right next to the... Um, right next to the cannon. So it's like, like sitting above it. And so rather than deflecting back again, it deflects up and out. And like right across it i think actually i think the way it would work is even it's not even destroyed or anything it's just like the lens is scratch it's worthless now mm -hmm. like it, the calibrations are that precise yep okay so junk that yep that's junk all right but you got you got the four so The this this swarm of them is done. The last like few that were remaining are like shredded into pieces, which are whatever still moving is easily swept up, so to speak, by Bert stomping about. Uh, and it's quiet for a little bit and then you can hear the sound of gunfire echoing down the halls again much like the floor above and a distant muffled whoop of some kind of explosive um on this level on this level what happens uh when i expend all the quirks again i know i get a breakdown but i don't remember what Ah uh, yes, so you can decide to take a dire action with your AV, or you can like basically leave it out of the mission, and it will come back later when it has, you know, reasonably been 
gotten some maintenance and is back in tip top shape. What happens when I take a dire action with the vehicle? Uh, the vehicle will take level 3 damage. It'll take the breakdown as normal. You got the one additional action. You ignore any existing harm or damage. You can't spend quirks because those are maxed out, but you can spend stress. Okay. Uh, good. Good to know. Um. But it's you have to decide before the end of the scene is the thing. Okay. Well, I feel like we've, we've reached it, so... Um. I I think that I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna send it away I'm gonna I'm gonna send it uh, back up, um, or at least like stick it somewhere where it's not like like it's out of the way, um, mm -hmm. and and hop out and um, hey Pitchfork can I can I hitch a ride? Yep, make yourself comfy. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm, like, um, desperately hiding things and, and shoving things. <laughs> so, so, Dredge is getting into Bert's cockpit? Is that the idea? What What's the descriptors for Bert's cockpit? Um, something, something, something industrial, something, what was it? Core bulky? Cockpit? Cramped. <laughs> great, great. Okay. You know what's really funny? Hmm. The Karasu explicitly has two cockpits. I forgot! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I think this works because this just plays in the drama of how nobody trusts Scarecrow anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, cool. Well, well, Dredge is gonna stick all like core gangly limbs in just like a little corner in the in the fucking uh, in in Bert. So, yeah. so what is in Bert's cockpit that Pitchfork is hiding before Dredge climbs in? Um, probably like empty snack bags, <laughs> like. Like protein, like protein bars, actually protein bar wrapper, a lot of protein bar wrappers. <laughs> um, that just kept escalating. <laughs> probably empty Soylent equivalent bottles. Please don't sue us, but yeah, Soylent, something like that. So um, it's a dorm room. There's probably some like broken farming tools in there that <laughs> Keiko meant to fix. Like Keiko broke them in the field, put them in Bert to to bring back to fix, and then. <laughs> Never got around to fixing. Um, there's like a really shitty cot shoved into one side too. How, how is there a cot in this cramped cockpit? It's a it's a fold up. <laughs> so it's not meant to be like opened while inside the cockpit. No 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 no. It's it's just for yeah. <laughs> okay. So I had the mental image of uh, Dredge just like. Just like sort of hunched over in the back, folding cord, like gangly limbs up onto the onto the cot, and just like kind of just kind of perching there, <laughs> just vaguely golem like, yeah. like that that kind of that kind of aesthetic. Yeah. Okay. So, the airlock door finishes opening all the way. The bear, the one remaining bear, like, shakes itself, and the, uh, body, the lumps fall off of it that were on it. It's, like, banged up and scratched up, but it's still functioning. The jello cubes. Yeah. Um. And what do you all do? I think, um, so, um, is Bert's cockpit still open? Yes. Okay, I think in that case, then, uh, Scarecrow's gonna go ahead and take point. Wander in, check the sides, what do we see? What's going on? Okay. So, this level is kind of similar in construction to the manufacturing level and that it appears to be a fairly uh, grid-based layout of corridors. 
Uh, however, this one is much less designed for large drones, AVs, and vehicles. There's, it looks like there's probably one main AV corridor going down the middle of it, and then one that sort of probably rings this level. Most of the stuff, most of the corridors are like person sized. You could probably, like with some effort, fit the magpie in one of those, since they're, you know, double wide hallways. Or the mantis. <laughs> it's too bad that neither of those obvies are currently available. Um, also, just uh, so nobody forgets, who remembers what your mission objectives are? Um, to, we've got two objectives. Well, we've got the main message. We've, sorry, the, we've got the main objective, and then we've got the secret objective. Uh, we need to find out what the sovereignty engine is, how it's controlled, and where it is. Um, uh, those... And we figured out what it is. Yep, um... it's rods and gods. Do, 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 do. I'm just finding it in the yep. thing. So yeah, you. that's right. You've got those three questions which you need to get actionable intel on for the Breath of Faith, and then you've got uh, the other mission for the March of Saints, which is to uh, make this whole facility safe for workers. Yep. Yeah. So, Scarecrow, you're on point. What are you doing? Um, so you say there's one corridor down, and then there's like basically like a ring around like the whole thing that obvious can also move through yeah it appears to be that way okay um i'm going to say and i think she's gonna like kind of take a very commanding voice here this is just like shit's gone down this is very military she is just like we need direction she's gonna give if no one else does and we need what she's going to say is we need to clear the ring because, and I'm actually, I'm going to name the black bag squads now, actually. I think I'm going to call them, uh, they're going to be a shade spear unit. Okay. And, um, these guys will collapse on us. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what they're doing here. Kill on sight. Do not fuck around. Watch your six. They will not hesitate. I said. Yeah. And uh, I will point out, for the sake of drama, there is a how do you know so much opportunity here. <laughs> Just pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to move. I'd like to move down the ring corridor and clear the perimeter first. All right. So the the. Gunfire that you heard previously has gone quiet. And you start working around the perimeter. And you come across the occasional, like, uh, staff member. You come across the occasional zombie. Let's just, let's just put it out there. And, yeah. like... So there's clearly still some on this level, but they're not, like, alone, they're not a threat in, in your obvious. You're just, like, able to kick it apart or whatever. You don't even need to to charge up your uh, mech shotgun. Uh, and so, hmm. This is yeah, what? Sorry, go ahead. This is... R and D, right? That's where we are. Yes. I'd like to find a terminal and see what's what. Okay, what kind of a terminal are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for a, a human-sized terminal. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Well, what I would, what I would really like is, I would like to find another AI to talk to. <laughs> um, 
mostly because I, I'm shit at computers, but also I, I just like talking to AI. So um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for that. Okay. Yeah, you're able to find like a essentially a directory interface terminal that's not far from the the airlock elevator. Hmm. And you turn it on. It says it has that same cheery greeting that you encountered in the manufacturing level as the priorities administration logistics AI appears and says greetings and welcome to the research and development level of Twindler and Red headquarters. How can I be of assistance? That's a that's a great question. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Uh... That's all right, pal. Take your time. Thanks, thanks, pal. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, but I was like, I I turned I I turned to the rest of the group and I'm like, what intel do we need? Um, sovereign engine. Also, any movement data for the this sector? Okay. Um. Hey, pal, can you tell me about uh, the uh, just sort of the schedule and the um the the the, the movement that's been happening on the, on this level? Schedule and movement. Mm -hmm. You know where where people go when they do it. Just so I have, I have an idea of the rhythm of, of, of how things work down here. I'm new. Ah, I see. Um. And then the like an agenda appears on the screen, listing a bunch of uh, like <laughs> personnel movements as requested. There's a lot of like uh, rows that just say like uh, classified, <laughs> or no, I wouldn't say that. It would say insufficient security clearance. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of those, and but you can see like the janitorial staff's movements around this level. That's something. Yeah, so you can see there's like um, uh, uh, organics research section. There is a uh, uh, aerospace research section. Um, and. and metallurgy research section like there's there's basically sections for a whole bunch of different fields mm -hmm. on this level but frankly i don't think that it, it, it also you're also if you ask for it provided a map Great. which will show you like the most general outline of where these sections are just like sort of a big colored blob for each one, not really detailing what hallways give you access to them or what you need to get access to them or what's in them, nothing like that. So it's not OSHA compliant. Not, what you're saying. not this information. Nothing here is OSHA compliant. Not in this level. So and disappointed. Such a review. <laughs> cool. Um all right. Uh I wonder if I can um present some some fine documents to get better clearance. <laughs> okay. Um what's your uh what's what's your play here? Um uh, I think it's just like, you know, um, great. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm missing some information here. I, I actually have pretty, pretty high clearance. I just haven't been situated in the system yet. Um, so if you, if you could, if you could just uh, free up some of these, some of these sections for me, so that I can, I can see what's going on, I would be much obliged. What do you want to roll for this? Oh, that's a sway, I believe. Okay. Sway with me. Yeah, this will be. You might convince a guard that you do in fact belong in the restricted area. <laughs> yeah, this will be 
Uh, I think this will be controlled great because you've got those fine documents, you're using an appropriate action, there's no immediate threats. Let's roll that beautiful 1d6. <laughs> Hang on, wait. I can do this like with with the with the cool thing. Hang on, I'm gonna do that instead. All right. So I controlled. Great. One whole dice. That's a four. I'll That's take it. That's a four. Okay. Uh, so you want the consequence? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the consequence is I am completing the contact clock. Cool. Which I will get to in a bit. So, Pal says, Ah, I'm sorry, I didn't see that you were a dear friend of the company. Glad to meet you. And all of those rows that were listed as insufficient security clearance now make themselves clear. The map makes itself clear. And so I'm gonna add all. Th I'm gonna add three ticks to the R and D clock. Oh yeah. So you've only got one more tick to find your way to the next level. And so you can. W what information do you want? Um, I want to know everything that there is to know about the sovereignty engine. Okay. So you search sovereignty engine. That information is not on this terminal. Uh, however, let me just give a thought. Where could you find the information for it? Um, you can find the information for it in aerospace or, uh, hmm. Yeah, no, you know what? I think it'll be in aerospace. Okay. I'd also like to know what is up with the silver um, people. Okay. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you, you catch a section uh, as you're scrolling through this list. Again, none of this terminal does not have like high detailed information on what is like it doesn't have close information on any of the projects it lists what the projects are and in which section you can find the research going on for them but does not state like w what their whole deal is okay. you well how. you do find that as you're scrolling through there is a nano robotics section and there is a project there about uh, using uh, nano robotics uh, for advanced tissue repair, uh, like aerosolized tissue repair. Lovely. That would extremely do it. Okay. Um, man, I would love to go see those notes, but that's just not what we're here for. Um. <laughs> sure is a good thing the uh, March of Saints will get it afterwards. I think that. Great. That, I think that might be what made the, the, the zombies, though. I think that might be what made the zombies, though. There's what? Yeah, no. Zombies always come from medicine. <laughs> A spoonful of zombie helps the medicine go down. <laughs> Cursed. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions? Um. Hmm. Not that, not that I can think of now. Is there anything anyone, anyone else would like to know? Um. That sounds like a yeah. no. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Scarecrow and Pitchfork, what are you two up to while Dredge is looking at this terminal? Um. I'd be looking for tower, maybe, knowing they ran off. Okay. How are you doing that? Well, since we went around the perimeter, might as well just go down the, the middle now, because we haven't done that yet. Just go right on down the middle. 
Okay, so you're wandering around while Dredge is at this oh. terminal. Oh no. And Scarecrow, where are you? What? I'm keeping watch over uh, Dredge. Okay. Just, just leave, leave a bear with me. I'm, I'll be good. Those bears okay. do have grenade launchers. Okay. In that case, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move with I'm gonna move with Pitchfork then. Okay. So the two of you are patrolling while this bear watches over Dredge. The first hint that you two get that something is amiss is when someone tries to hack your AVs. But, 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 <laughs> as y'all took custom OS last <laughs> session, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, there is a large bear sized drone with a grenade launcher watching oh. over Dredge. Yep. <laughs> Dredge. The bear, like you hear it make an odd noise. And then I think Pal says, warning, there has been a system corruption of your companion bear, Mark III. Warning. And then you look over your shoulder and it's beginning to orient itself and it's grenade launcher at you. You are now in a desperate position, Dredge. Oops. <laughs> That's a wussy noodle. That's just a little fucky wucky. <laughs> I no, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you, Sasha. <laughs> I did those particular. Com combined syllables in my ears tonight. Thanks. <laughs> it's been so long. You have to renew the curse occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect to do with that. So I'm, I'm going to throw a couple of clocks up. Great. Is this punishment? Well, I mean, there was an eight tick contact clock that y'all have spent the last three sessions filling. Fair. That's true. True. Oh my god, it got hacked and got buff. <laughs> <laughs> That's two more ticks than it had under us. <laughs> Bear, you slut. <laughs> Don't slut oh, no. bear. Alright. <laughs> Okay, so I have added a, oh, I think y'all might have been, uh, er... Oh no, there's another mystery clock. Yeah, so there is now a four tick <laughs> bear mark three clock. There is a eight tick question mark clock. Oh, and no. there is a six tick shade spear clock. Ugh. Oh God. So. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to reveal that question mark right now. So, Scarecrow. Yep. There's that hack attempt. And then you get a comms ping from outside of the squad. Oh, fuck me. Oh, no. no. Not now. No. Do you answer? Uh. So there, there's caller ID. I know who's calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you don't. I don't. Okay. I would say that normally you do, but something has scrambled the caller ID. Okay, uh, in that case, what uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna open the channel, but I'm not gonna have uh, webcam off, basically. 
and uh, her her comm screen for when camera's off is just an icon of a crow skull. Okay. So it comes up, and it's a younger version of you on your screen. And she says, how are you doing, Rissa? It's Riza, bitch. Very well. I see if that's how it's going to be. And then another voice come over, comes over the comms. This one a man. And he says, Now ladies, there's no reason to fight. You're sisters after all. And a face appears. And Jess, what does Harlan Smythe look like? Um, I'm picturing ve- like very, very, pretty much. I'm just picturing exactly Chris Pine, but with like a much more like intense stare. <laughs> All right. So, like very piercing eyes. He says, "What are you doing here, Riza?" Okay, she's gonna toggle the webcams. Just. My job, what the fuck do you think I'm doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I could reply to you equally rudely, or we could exchange information. Tell you what, cease fire, then we'll exchange intel. I haven't opened fired. And the bear you guys hijacked? Well, I mean, your companion isn't a splatter in the hallway, so I don't think it's opened fire yet. Okay. Keep it that way. We'll talk. So what are you doing here? We are here to secure the facility. Hmm. Mm hmm. So then, why has your companion been poking around asking questions about the sovereignty engine? Consider it a side gig. A side gig. Interesting. I see. All right. Okay. Well then, if uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll answer some. I'll answer your question. I am here. Well, I'm here to find out. What is at the bottom of this facility? That's why I'm here. And I got a side gig going on of my own. Okay. <laughs> In chat says, I'm here to kill you, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <sighs> so it seems we're at a bit of an impasse. I don't know. I don't know doesn't seem like well doesn't seem like our goals are necessarily uh, mutually exclusive if you're uh, willing to overlook my squad and its activities we know you guys don't exist come on <laughs> he smirks at that well if, if you're happy keeping it that way, then I think, uh, I think we can, you know, stay out of your way of, uh, trying to secure this facility. We'll just take what we need and we'll go. Okay. Does that sound, uh, fine to you? A moment of privacy. I need to consult with my co-workers. All right. Okay, and I think... You're, um, go ahead. Sorry. I think she, um, at some point early in the conversation, she patched everyone in to listen in on this. Unobtrusively. Okay. 
Okay. So she ki- she kills the line with Harlan. Opens up um, team chat, so to speak. Your custom OS immediately indicates that someone is listening in. So it hasn't stopped the intrusion. Well, it hasn't stopped the intrusion, but it's alerted us to it. Yeah. Well, guys, what do we think? Do we want to play ball? I would love to not explode. Yeah. This is a Shade Spear unit. They don't fuck around. Three oaths. And for background, um, Sasha, you, um, Dredge may have heard rumor of this. But there are three oaths you take as a Jovangelian citizen. One you're sworn to when you're born, completely out of this. Second one when you take up military service. And third one when you die. A Shakespeare uh, unit member is supposed to have already taken all three. Great. Takuma, you're muted. I prefer Korra alive. <laughs> also, yeah. Yeah. And also, it just does not seem like the, their thing has... Like, that, that. it's not oppositional to us in a significant way. Like, just let them do their thing. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Listen, we're... we're, we're um just trying to secure it. Whatever happens between now and then, we've already destroyed some of it, so it's uh, collateral as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Alright. Uh, she mutes team chat. Pulls open the thing. I know you already know my answer, Harlan. It's my job to know things. Yeah. Alright. Well... Also, um, I'm curious for his reaction to something because um, they go back, but I think this is probably the first time he's seen her face since way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's fucked up. She's scarred up, like, just there. Yeah. So I'm curious if he had any reaction to that. Nothing visible, I don't think. Okay, that's fine by me. It's probably going in his, his file on you. Of course. All right, then. Well, hopefully this can remain peaceful between us. I'll I'd like that way. I'll try and keep Shadespear out of your way, but technically I'm just a liaison to the squad. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they'll agree with my assessment of your involvement. And nothing bad will happen. Excellent. It's good to see you again. It's interesting to see you here. I'm sure I'll be seeing more of you later, though. And he shuts off the comms. As far as you can tell. She thumps her, she thumps her fist on a um, on some random bit in the cockpit. <laughs> All right, and I think with that, we will take a quick break, everyone. So we will be back shortly. <laughs> 